Alright guys, so in this video we are going to learn how can we use TypeScript to interact with HTML DOM. Now before we move on, I would like to mention that to keep the project simple, I have deleted certain files that we generated in the previous video. And those are the declaration file and the manually created tsconfig file. The another change that I have made to this tsconfig.json file is that I have turned these settings off. Okay. Alright, so the document object model or the DOM defines the logical structure of HTML documents and essentially acts as an interface to web pages. Now through the use of programming languages such as JavaScript and TypeScript, we can access the DOM to manipulate websites and make them interactive. For the most part, when we work with DOM in TypeScript, it is the same when we work with DOM in JavaScript. We can use the same event listeners, query methods, access HTML element properties and methods, etc. But there are few key differences to be aware of. Also, TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript and it ships type definition for the DOM API using lib.dom.d.ts declaration file. And we'll see that file okay, in a while. Now, these type definitions are readily available in any default TypeScript project. Let's now see some examples. So this is our index.html page and we have this HTML heading element h1 which has got the text employ inventory. Now to access this element from our TypeScript code we have to say const h1 equal to document dot query selector and in here you pass in that selector so let's pass in h1 okay let's log it to the console we say h1 let me save it this is how i access elements in javascript so it is still the same in typescript let's go to our application and check it out so yes we see that element okay in the console okay so far so good let's hover over this h1 so we see HTML heading element pipe symbol null. Okay, so there are two questions popping in the mind currently. Number one, why we see any type when we have not provided explicitly the type of this H1 variable. Okay, number two, if it could be null as you could see in the hint, okay, we got to handle that, isn't it? All right, so we'll see both of these one by one let's start with the type first now to understand that we have to click on this query selector press your control key and click on this now this is the library i was talking about right so you see lib.dom.d.ts is what type declaration file okay which contains the type definition for all the dom apis all right in here you have to identify an interface html element tag name map okay this is the interface now in this you would find all the different type of html elements like anchor audio body button canvas now we were working with h1 type of element let's scroll down and find that in our list here we go so we have this html heading element okay now Let's do one thing, press the control key and again click on it. So in here you see, this is a method new which returns this HTML heading element. That is the reason why we are seeing this HTML heading element when we hover over H1. Now what about this null? Why are we seeing null? So in here, in the TypeScript, we are writing this code, okay? to access this element but typescript does not have access to index.html web page and it cannot confirm that this kind of element exists in there or not okay now for point two right let's try to access the text content property and we can do so by using the dot operator so we say text content okay now as typescript knows that 
it is of type HTML heading element. It shows all the properties and methods available on HTML heading type element. So one such property is content. So we write h1 dot text content but hey we got this error it says object is possibly null right so we know it right now it's it's time to combat this okay and we can handle this essentially uh, using uh, two two ways okay number one we can say if h1 okay meaning if this exists then do it like so okay now the error is gone we save it go to our application and we see the text content okay great that's one way now the other way is we are going to tell typescript explicitly that hey we are sure that this element is there in the dom okay so in that case right so let me copy this as well and comment this out all right so now come here paste it we get this error now to they, they are essentially three ways you can you can handle you can tell type to that hey this element uh, you know does exist in the dom one by putting this exclamation mark after this query selector the error goes away you save it go to the application okay and you see that text content great the other place where you can keep this exclamation mark is after this h1 okay you save it again go back to the application and you see that all right the last one is instead of this exclamation mark you put a question mark okay still no error and still the functionality remains the same so you see employ inventory all right now let's move on to another example and this time in the query selector we would rather use css selectors like classes and ids okay so let's visit our index.html page so down here we have a form element okay and this form has got a class new dash emp dash form so come in here let's comment out everything const form equal to document dot query selector and you say for class we use dot and you provide this value and then you put in the exclamation mark at the end all right like so and if you have to log into the console we say form okay but the thing is when you hover over this form constant right we see element you know it has to be html form element now the thing is because this is not of type form right if you do form dot you know you, you won't see form specific properties and method now this has happened because if you use anything instead of element selector in here okay then the interface that we saw right html element tag name map in that declaration file won't be useful and typescript will just return a fairly basic element type now we can combat this in two ways number one using generix now as with query selector it is often the case that a function can return various different structures and it's impossible for typescript to determine which one will that be in that case you can pretty much expect that said function is also a generic and you can provide that return type in a convenient generic syntax how to do that come in here query selector this is how we pass generic we learned that in the generics video and here we see html form element all right now there is a property on this form object and that is children so let's select that okay now because of this you will see right all the form specific properties and methods all right now let me save this 
and go back to our application all right so we see the list of html collection and this collection contains all my elements okay all my elements as you could see when i'm hovering this it is selecting that div and inside that we have that select okay and so on another option so i just comment this out for a future reference come in here next one is typecasting so we get rid of this and we say as html form element now guys when you do it like this you don't need to provide in the explanation it still work save it go back and now you see the same list again great so now let's do the same for the remaining elements on to that page okay so like we are going to find this select so there are two selects and three input right and one clear button for the add button we are going to use the form submission behavior okay so we don't need to find that and now guys you have to trust me on the i the id the selector that i'm going to put in okay because i know these all right so these are my different ids i provided ids for each of the element okay so let me comment this out come here i say const department element okay and it is document dot query selector and it has got the id department and i say as html select element like so so let me take a copy of it like so okay let's make the changes now so we have next one is name okay then we have age okay like so then we have is head element let's give it this name and this is going to be department head then i've got email like so and at the end i have that clear button so i'll just say clear and that is going to be the id of it now let's make some changes because these are html input elements okay so we have this this now it's time to start adding the event listener okay so we are going to add two event listeners the first one would submit this form i'm going to read the values from all of these elements and print that to the console when i click on this add button using the submit when that we are going to fire so we're going to write a a listener basically which is going to listen to this kind of event now same way for clear what i'm going to do is so when we enter value click on add button right those values would be printed to the console but on clear right on clicking the clear button i want to clear out these fields okay that's what we want to do so we say form okay on form i want to write that add event listener which event submit and once that is that is triggered right i want to execute this callback function now this callback will take in an argument of type event like so the first thing that we want to do in here is e dot prevent default now that prevents the page refresh which is the default behavior when we submit a form okay then down here we use console log and print all the values entered into those form fields okay so we come in here the first element is this now how do we access values so we have this value property like so and this value property returns you what string 
so we are fine in case of department because that contains it and non it so value is fine then you have got name element and then again value age dot now guys age is number value right so we have this method value as number okay so this returns you what number okay so instead of value we'll say value is number then you have got is head okay and dot value like so then you have got email element dot value okay so now let's save it and go back to our application and start adding some values so let's change this to it qa box let's add some the age is head abc we click on add wait guys so all the values are locked to the console so our event listener is working and like we do in javascript we have done pretty much the same no difference at all just that we are providing this type this extra type in here all right nothing else it's pretty much the same now we used value as number for the age and you could clearly see the difference now it is in blue rest all are into dark gray right they are string you still see the previously entered value right in here right even after the form is submitted so let's let's clear those out okay and to do so we are going to write another event listener we're going to say clear dot add event listener and the event would be click this time and then we have to execute this function when the event is triggered okay and all we are going to do is form dot reset like so save it go back to our application again provide in those values like so click on add okay now click on clear okay so you get the default values the form is reset now you might think that you know this one line of code okay i can write in here directly right like so absolutely we can do that all right the only reason why i'm keeping it here because in future i'm going to write in here more code okay all right so this is how you can use typescript to interact with html dom thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video